end up talking more at that point. All right, <laughs> we started, great. Welcome to the 96 Boards Open Hours. Uh, my name is Robert Wolf, and today we got a very exciting episode planned for you. It's going to be on AOSP, Android Open Source Project, and uh, the High Key Board, which is one of our 96 boards available to you. Sorry, that was my alarm there. <clears throat> yeah, so with that, I, I want to kind of first go into what we always do, right? We, we always kind of talk about what we saw last week, and then we branch out into what we're going to do this week. So last week was the reference software platform. And unfortunately, I don't have anyone on here right now. I was I was told I might have someone on here to to answer questions if anyone had questions with regards to that, but no one's on here. So we're going to kind of skip that section, which uh, might even just allow us to have more time for hanging out after after the show. But with the reference software platform, our intentions was were, were to release it on that day or within that week, right? So we had our last show on Thursday of last week. Reference software platform was moving from 1603 to 1606. And unfortunately we didn't get that released until this week. And that actually just got pushed, I think yesterday. So you were able to go, and I'm gonna share these links with you now. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll post these, uh, I'll post these GitHub links right here. But on the github.com slash Lenaro slash documentation, right here you have uh, one of our one of our documentation landing pages. This is the home page. From there, you can click on the reference software platform page, and that takes you to the landing page for the reference software platform. The board we're going to be talking about today with the AOSP is actually one of our boards that is part of the reference software or reference hardware platform that is part of the reference software platform. So from that last page I just sent, you can actually go to the uh, quick start reference hardware platforms and you'll see the high key there. We have the 1606 release for, uh, for Debian reference platform build. And then we have a links that take you to the Google dev site for building the AOSP, um, the AOSP builds. And this is actually something I should probably talk to John about. I don't even know if I'm, I'm naming that properly right now. So <laughs> we could talk about that later. We might want, might want to tackle that and change the name there. But um, moving, moving forward, right? So we have John and Amit Pundir here. They're both going to talk to us about some pretty interesting stuff. In the, in the last couple weeks, we've had several questions about this, and I'm hoping that I'm – I'm hoping I have some questions prepared for them that will that will help people watching the video later to to understand what's going on more with what they were asking. Um, if not, then uh, then we'll we'll have to just kind of tackle that later. So without spending too much time on 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 what we talked about last week and just kind of babbling on, I want to introduce John and, and Amit right here. Uh, it, last week, I tried getting the guys to introduce themselves and tell tell us a little bit about themselves. I think it just kind of got skipped over. So maybe what we could just do first here is I'll start with John. Maybe you could just tell us what you do for Lenaro, uh, you know, and and introduce yourself. Okay. Hey, so I'm John Stoltz. Um, yeah, and I've been at Lenaro, uh, I guess a little over five years now. Um, and uh, basically was an assignee originally and then uh, became an employee. Um, I've been focusing pretty much on Android and trying to get kind of the Android patch sets upstream for the majority of that time. I've done a little bit of time on other projects like Aura. Um, but uh, yes, and so basically, um, I guess uh, last September or so, I uh, got involved in Hikey and AOSP, and uh, there was kind of a big six-month sprint to get uh, Hikey into AOSP, which was finally announced uh, at the last Connect. Um, and so very excited that we got to announce that and uh, very excited that folks have been using it and, you know, the great feedback in the forum and things like that. <laughs> Sometimes just questions or bugs, it's, it's always great to get that sort of uh, real user feedback. Um, and uh, yeah, so I guess that's probably it for me. I don't, I don't know. Is there any, <laughs> anything else cool, you want to yeah, add no. to that? No, we'll we'll dive into you into your presentation in just a sec, mm -hmm. but I, I guess let's let's introduce Amit real quick as well. So what's up, Amit? Hello, uh, I'm Amit Pundis. Uh, I'm an Android engineer in the Naro Mobile Group. 
uh, I started as a platform engineer, did initial Android porting on supported devices, which we had at that time, uh, did some feature enablement uh, for last, I think, one and a half years now. Uh, I'm looking into Linaro Android kernel trees, updating Android, sorry, not uh, updating AOSP patches uh, in LSK, Linaro stable trees and uh, core tracking trees. Also does also does a, a fix or two in AOSP kernel tree, uh, and uh, what else? Uh, Android upstreaming, yes, Android kernel upstreaming. Uh, that's also part of my job. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. So I don't know how I'm going to exactly kind of phrase these questions. I'm going to kind of pass it over to John first, and then I guess if if you have anything to chime in, Amit, then feel free to to chime in. We'll see what we can do here. But I want to start off by just passing the floor to you, starting off with a, with a question. And the question is for anyone who doesn't know what AOSP is, like just pretend I don't know what AOSP is. Uh, I've heard of Android, obviously, right? That's everywhere. But what what's the difference between AOSP and Android, if there is a difference? And, and also, I've also heard AOSP called, I think, a couple different things. So what's the actual... Yeah, uh, I mean, so AOSP is, is what I'm always, uh, I guess, hearing, but uh, there may be some other takes on it too. Um, but AOSP stands for the Android Open Source Project. Um, and so uh, basically it is the uh, kind of open source, uh, uh, I guess, I don't know, distribution is not quite the right word, but uh, a software platform um, upon which most Android devices are built on. And so, you know, it's basically the core shared uh, foundation that everybody seems to be using. Um, it's developed in the open, so basically everyone's able to go into Garrett and uh, contribute changes and review changes, even if you know they, 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 they aren't an owner of some area or something like that. They can go in and say, actually, I don't like this or that sort of thing. Um, and so it, it is uh, developed fairly openly. Um, Google does a fair amount of work in the open on AOSP. Um, in the past, they used to have the thing where, you know, kind of you'd get code dumps at the end of a release, and so their internal tree would just kind of get dumped out to AOSP. But uh, over the last few years, they've been doing a lot more work um, kind of directly into the AOSP master branch, um, which then gets folded into their uh, official releases. Um, but, you know, this is also the base which, you know, Amazon uses their uh, Fire OS uh, um, and, and other the platforms that uh, aren't necessarily always branded as Android. Um, but uh, as far as the difference to Android, that's, you know, it's kind of a little bit simple in that, you know, quite often people are thinking of Google Androids, you know, which is kind of the, the more canonical version. Um, and the difference there is usually just the, the Google platform services. And so basically they have their, you know, ex extra APIs and sort of uh, tools that a lot of applications make use of, as well as the Play Store for application uh, distribution. Um, and so that tends to be what most people think of as, as Android. Um, I'm not sure. It, I think there's a little bit of a, you know, some, some people have different takes on it. It gets into kind of that, you know, what is Linux? Is it just a kernel or a distribution sort of thing when people just start uh, uh, throwing around the term Android? Um, but AOSP definitely is, is just the open source base um, that everybody can kind of collaborate and work on. Great. Yeah, no. Um, Amit, did you have anything to add to that? I know it kind of... No, I think John sums it up uh, pretty nicely. And it's not just Amazon or, uh, I mean, which is using AOSP. And I, th I think Alibaba was in news a couple of hours back that they had released an internet connected car and they're using something called UnOS. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. And uh, I tried to look into what it, it is actually, and it seemed to be an AOSP fork. So you know, there you go. So it's just an open port which anyone can use. and it doesn't necessarily need to be tied down to Google services or anything which is, you know, proprietary. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's good. I, I, I think you explained the AOSP and Android. I mean, essentially Android is Google's kind of their, their operating system that they put on their phones or that they offer for people to put on those phones. It's managed by them, maintained by them, but AOSP is more community driven, right? This is mm -hmm. essentially the idea. Yeah. And you know, also since AOSP isn't doesn't tend to get used in in, in final products, you know, at, at just on its own, uh, you also have things like it doesn't have the uh, update processes and things like that that you see in normal phones. Um, so that you know, you don't get over the air updates to an AOSP build. Um, that's something where you you've got to do your own build for that. 
Um, wow. So that's kind of another larger difference that people see uh, just on the kind of more practical side. Gotcha. So now since we're talking about AOSP and the high keyboard, right, because one of the the, the special things is that the high key or the AOSP for the high key is available uh, at the Google dev site and it's available to contribute there. I just kind of want to know, because I've heard people say like, this is, this is a, this is a great thing. This is such a big deal. Why, why is this such a big deal compared to us hosting or Lenaro or some other place hosting this, <clears throat> this uh, AOSP for us to contribute up to them? Why is this such a big deal? Could you just kind of explain why this makes the high key such a big deal for using AOSP that that uh, from there? Yeah, so, so one of the, one of the first things that's important is that it's basically if the first time in a while. So basically, way back when uh, when the Panda board was a, a kind of a major board, um, that was an AOSP for a little while, and that was very exciting because we all had you know a dev board to work on um, and to kind of help develop things. Um, if you were trying to work with Android and, and get to use it, you could work with the AOSP source. So you basically you could work with the direct upstream source uh, for AOSP. Um, and so for other boards, everyone has to kind of create a, a, a fork and, you know, add their own device directory and make other tweaks. And, you know, just when anyone makes a fork casually, even if they don't intend to, quite often changes that uh, could be shared end up not being shared. So everyone's basically working in their own kind of private branch off to the side um, for their one device. And some of the common features that might be, you know, shared between multiple boards is just getting duplicated. Um, and so by being able to work directly in AOSP and having this board there, um, we're able to make sure that any of the changes that we are that we make are able to be shared across, you know, the other platforms where that's appropriate. Um, and so it's, it's, it's basically creates kind of a, a Nexus level support uh, what you see with Nexus devices, but with the dev board. And so this is just, it's, it's something that was, you know, missing for a number of years and I'm, I'm very excited that we have it. Um, it's, it's helped a lot for uh, the development. Also the fact that we're working kind of directly with uh, uh, Google in a lot of cases, um, we're able to kind of uh, help, I guess, you know, th their interest in this board as well allows us to, 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 to help motivate change um, inside of AOSP. So things like trying to make sure that they're running on a, a recent long-term stable kernel release is something that we've kind of tried to push really hard for and um, have been fairly successful with. Um, and so that that's something that I, I think was really important by having Heike there. Um, but it does give us something that, you know, a, a board that is getting a lot of the functionality pushed upstream. Um, and so we're getting something that's very close to mainline and being able to have that also work inside of the AOSP context um, really makes it a lot easier to do development. When we're trying to chain make features uh, that we want to push upstream, you know, being able to validate that in an environment with Android using current technologies, uh, you know, on, on both sides is, is really great. And so you don't have to do things where you're, you know, backporting a change to a 310 kernel in order to test to see if that works or not in the Android environment. Um, so it's, it's, it's been really great as far as uh, helping kind of collaboration both between the AOSP community and the upstream kernel community. Nice. I think that you answered that perfectly. <laughs> At least to my knowledge, you answered it perfectly. Um, Moving on from moving on from there. So this question came up on the forums and I think I have a let me see if I have the forum post right here. I do. How to install Android apps on the high key. Now this is moving away from, you know, what makes the high key so special in having the AOSP available to us uh, from the source. But this post right here was asking how do I install apps on the high key AOSP? Now I know I've ran into issues on other 96 boards where, you know, I wish I had the Google play store, right? That just makes it really easy. If you want to just take a look here on this, I'm not sure if the forum really covers it, but I would like just maybe you to give your own recommendation and I've downloaded, I've set up AOSP on my board. Uh, I know how APKs work. Um, do you recommend me just grabbing APKs? Are there is there another way? Can I get the Google Play Store on AOSP? I mean, what 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 do you say about um, that? Yeah, I mean, so I, I I think there are ways to get 
you know, not not necessarily uh, totally above board ways of getting uh, the Google Play Store onto an AOSP platform. And, and people do that inside of things like the Cyanogen mod and, and other environment where they get the Google apps on their devices. Um, I, it's a little fraught legally. I'm not really sure kind of uh, depending on where you live and <laughs> what, what sort of rules are in place. So I'm not really going to uh, suggest that. Um, I, basically, side loading uh, uh, works fairly well with uh, uh, AOSP devices. So that's basically where you're doing the ADB install and then an APK file. Um, there are a number of APKs that you can get for open source projects that are out there. So things like Firefox, you can get that uh, uh, directly from Mozilla. Uh, you can get APKs from them. Um, there's also uh, the F-Droid project, which is basically kind of a open source focused place. It's, a, it's like the Play Store and it's sort of a, an app store. Um, and so basically it just focuses on all open source, you know, projects that people make into APKs. Um, and so you can get a lot of things out of that. So projects like Kodi, I believe you can get through that. Um, Kodi also is another project that they provide APKs uh, on their website. Um, and so there's a way to get enough things. It, it doesn't create quite the same, uh, uh, you know, array of applications that you can get. But I mean, part of the reason why, you know, the Play Store is there is so folks can sell proprietary applications. And so it wouldn't be uh, really <laughs> probably the right thing to just be putting those in on the side. And, um, so yeah, uh, it, it, it's, it's um, I, I'd, I'd probably recommend F-Droid or having a handful of, you know, projects that you use uh, um, yourself. I, as far as if you're developing your own applications, you can uh, uh, basically build them and do an uh, ADB install sideload, and that's no problem. Um, since, uh, you know, the Hikey device is a uh, dev board, it doesn't come with a lot of the restrictions that, um, you know, the polished final devices have. So basically, you, you can get root on Hikey right away so that that's that's something that just comes by default with it um so you know th there's no need to, to to root the device or anything like that <laughs> it is also it is also still as simple as just opening a browser on your high key running aosp going downloading an apk going to the downloads and just so is, i haven't actually tried also? myself directly on the device i've always done through uh downloading it to my uh you know, build machine and then basically doing an ADB install um, with the package. Um, I, I don't, I haven't tried a direct install that that may be able to work. I think you may have to go in and also uh, allow, you know, third party options or something like that. But gotcha. I, I'm, I tend to flash my devices so often that I just want to have a collection of APKs that I can, you know, automate onto the, the device for testing. Cool. Well, that makes sense. I mean, if you're always if you're always racing and restarting, then then <laughs> there's no point of having it just on the device. So let's let's move on to the next question. Then maybe I'll I'll phrase this one to Amit. See if he's if he can answer this one. This was also a forum post, and I don't know if Trevor's in the call. In fact, I'm not sure if this was Trevor that posted this, but um, the forum the forum post was from a Trev D. So I was kind of maybe seeing since he participates so often in these calls. Um, the question is, do I submit changes, fixes to things like build files, et cetera, through the AOSP, like every other device? And then this on along the same note uh, is who's best to assign as reviewers for those changes? And Trevor says, hey. sorry, that wasn't him. <laughs> but the forum post, let me let me just copy paste the forum post here for everyone so they can see it. But yeah, so uh, if, if go ahead, Amit, if that makes any sense, those those questions. Yeah, so submitting changes is, yeah, I mean, it's easy, but yes, you have to get a hang of it first. So it's just the git push and just redirect it to the particular project where you want to push the pro that particular patch. Now, the important thing here is the contribution agreement, which I think the second question was, right? Uh, no, sorry, it's not that one. Yeah, yeah, so so it was, is, yeah. yeah, so the first thing is, yes, you have to have a contribution agreement. Otherwise, it will just fail that, you know, you have to sign that agreement first that you are a authorized contributor for submitting patches upstream uh, to AOSP get it. So that is the first step. Uh, I, I think it's straightforward. If you have a Gmail ID, you just go there and write Google source, and write review.googlesource.com. You go there and you try to go to the settings and then 
we download that particular form you have to sign it scan it back and uh, i have not done it actually but i think this is all it should be there so, because we already had a linaro agreement which covered all this thing for us to start with so but i think the process is this simple and once you have it there you can submit the patches to any project you want and by any project i mean all the open source projects which are hosted by aosp get it you can just do the change submit the patch uh, i'm not going into much details of you know doing a repo upload and repo and other things so if you want i can go there but just to keep it brief I'll, it's just as simple as doing a git push to a particular project and uh, uh, it looks it looks like Akira actually posted a, a and I didn't know this existed but that's that's pretty cool a forum post by him that shows how to become a contributor to the AOSP on on high key so I think this probably goes through a lot of the steps you were just explaining that's nice nice to have and one yeah. one person um, probably it might be. It, uh, better to use the repo than doing manually for the Java and hash, hash pack, but um, I haven't able to revise it. Yes. Yeah. So if you have, uh, I mean, I've used the repo when I'm, you know, uh, modifying more than one project at one time, and the changes are related. Because when you do a repo upload, it will, you know, uh, give you an interactive session that. You know which all patches, what all branches, or what all patches you want to push. So if you are you know dealing with a couple of different projects, then you can just uncheck all those projects and it will upload those changes simultaneously. You can do it independently also using Git push, but I think repo upload is a much better tool in that case. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Did you have anything else you wanted to say, Akira? Um. Yeah, I I follow this instruction exactly, and I was able to submit changes. Yeah, but so yeah. if you only going to submit one patch, it it's okay. <laughs> it works. Okay, cool. Now, um, the the other thing now, I was uh, going to just inject oh, there real quick too is if if you are a Lenaro uh, employee or a Lenaro, if you have a Lenaro.org uh, email address, um. Basically, if you aren't able to uh, contribute right away, if it's giving you some trouble about the CLA, uh, send an email to me or Amit or, or someone else in your, your management chain, and, and we can make sure that you get added to the list. Cool. Did um, John? Did you did you want to go through your presentation? I know you said you had a presentation. Yeah, so I, I've got some slides. It was one of those things where I kind of threw together some slides that I was uh, working on, uh, possibly for the next connect. Um, and so I figured I'd do kind of a quick run through, just kind of give some folks some updates on, on some of the recent changes in uh, high key. Um, so if, if folks are willing to <laughs> sit through it, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely go through it. Um, I got my questions out of the way. So okay. I got one more well, question, but I'm gonna wait till the end for that. Okay, so I'm gonna try to see if I can get this screen sharing to work properly. Uh... Hi John, uh, I think I missed one part of the last question. I think that was about the reviewers, right? So, uh, who I mean, oh, yeah, the reviewers, from, that's true. Yes, yes. yes. So, uh, just a second, someone, yeah. So, uh, when you upload your changes, uh, by default, you get a couple of reviewers from that project uh, by default. So, I think, uh, I mean, for me, I know the actual developers who are actually working on the, those projects, so I explicitly mark them. But if you don't know the developers who are in charge of taking care of that project, so uh, you don't have to worry about that. In maybe in a day or at max in a couple of days, uh, someone will review those changes. Yeah, it, it can also help if, if it's particular to high key, if you uh, tag me on it or Amit or um, uh, Vishal Boj, those, those are all great folks to, to put on and we'll kind of do a first pass review and then we're able to also pull in more of uh, uh, more appropriate folks uh, from the Google team. Cool, cool. yeah, so it looks like your presentation is, is up. It, it looks okay. like it's working.
All right, yeah. good. I, <laughs> one of those things I can't actually see what everybody else is seeing now, so I'm just kind of <laughs> going to drive through here and hope everything's all right. But uh, yeah, so um, basically, uh, again, we're still kind of continuing the collaboration that we have uh, with Google um, and kind of working closely. We have kind of a weekly sync up with them, um, being able to make sure that any of the use cases that we're trying to uh, make work inside of uh, uh, Hikey uh, can uh, get merged and then as well as uh, some of the use cases that they have uh, internally uh, they, they want and so basically we try to figure out kind of how are we going to make this all work um, so it's a really great collaboration that's been going on for uh, you know a number of months now um, and but you know for the most part all of these changes go directly through AOSP uh, Garrett's so basically we're, we're using the same open process that you know everyone else can use um, so even though we do kind of uh, interact a, a little more directly uh, everything's being done pretty much in the open. Um, I think the only cases where we don't do that is where we have, you know, if, if there's something like a big uh, uh, long-term stable merge. So if, if, if 4, 4, 15 comes out, um, sometimes we have to kind of say, oh, here's a branch to pull and, and, and they'll get, pull that in because it's just, you know, you don't want to go through Garrett with hundreds of patches at once. Um, but uh, yeah, so everything's kind of out in the open even, even despite the uh, uh, kind of sync ups that we have. Um, and so, yeah, so it's, it's been really great. Um, some of the new features that we've added uh, since the announcement. Um, so basically, we migrated to a 4.4 stable-based kernel. Um, and so right now, I think that's 4.4.14. So we're trying to keep it uh, very current. And so we're basically trying to follow the long-term stable releases as closely as possible. Um, and so uh, uh, this is drastically different than what you'll find on uh, kind of the most boards or most, most devices. Um, and so we're trying to kind of be a really good example of, of, of how folks can maintain a, a device. Um, also, we've gotten HDMI and USB audio uh, included, um, and that's actually some of the USB audio was was, was helped like, helped along with uh, some prodding from the forum, and so that was really great to uh, get that feedback and kind of people pointing out that that would be a useful use case to enable. Um, there's things like uh, the display uh, panel mezzanine support, so that's something that actually uh, just got fully merged yesterday. Um, and so basically, uh, when when the display panel mezzanines are uh, available, we'll be able to just kind of plug those in and have them work. Um, we've got the suspend and resume support. There was a few issues uh, early on that we had to resolve. Uh, I believe most of them were kind of with the Molly uh, integration um, that was preventing suspend and resume from working, but we finally got those knocked out, and so that's there. Um, the interactive CPU frequency governor has been integrated in, and as well as a power how to provide uh, a boosting when uh, the device is being worked, uh, interacted with. Um, Another uh, interesting area was uh, basically the A boot image support in UEFI. So UEFI normally expects uh, the boot partition to be a FAT based partition. So that's what you normally see. You know, you go into kind of uh, almost a very classical kind of grub environment. Um, but Google is much more comfortable with using a boot image, um, especially in their build process. Um, they were not excited about having uh, uh, more kind of uh, support packages that you needed in order to create a FAT partition and then also, you know, put that into the system. Um, so how Jen actually uh, managed to put together, uh, you know, support in UEFI for the A boot image support. Um, and so this basically allows us to kind of have a more uh, a Nexus like flow uh, with both our build and our uh, deployment. Um, there's also uh, USB tethering that Amit added. Uh, so this basically allows you to kind of be able to plug in through USB and use uh, the Hikey's Wi-Fi as, as an Ethernet device. Um, so it, it's been useful for uh, stress testing some of the network uh, code. Um, and then also the FIQ debugger, which is the, basically a fast interrupt debugger. It's, it's kind of a neat uh, debugger that uh, is in the Android uh, common tree. Um, and it basically is, as opposed to like KDB, which is sort of a stop the world debugger, the FIC debugger um, runs kind of asynchronously. So basically it, it allows you to put in commands while the system is running and then examine uh, 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 parts of the system. Um, it's somewhat limited in what it'll show because the idea is that it's supposed to be uh, robust from uh, uh, kind of a, a you know, a, a malicious actor. So you can't, you know, modify the system, but you're able to kind of get a little bit of information that's helpful for debugging. Um, the one asterisk on that is, is basically that the FIC debugger normally expects that the, uh, basically what's called the fast interrupt is used to uh, uh, trigger it. And, and this is useful because the fast interrupt is sort of a higher priority, sort of almost like an NMI um, in the x86 world. Um, but with uh, the secure mode uh, feature that's been added, uh, uh, I guess since the A15s or so, um, 
basically the FIQ gets consumed by the secure mode. And so we can uh, potentially be able to bounce that over out of secure world into the kernel again. Um, and so, but since the, that's not implemented at the moment, the FIQ debugger, it's, it's, it's in, it's enabled, it works, but it really is an IRQ debugger. So if IRQs are off, uh, you can't actually uh, get in and debug stuff at that point. Um, but that's something that will may, may, may change in the future. Um, Another uh, kind of big area that we're working on is uh, prototyping EAS integration. Um, so this is kind of an example of how you know we're using uh, uh, HiKey to prototype work uh, both you know internally inside of Lenaro as well as working with uh, Google. Um, and so basically trying to as well as ARM as well. I'm sorry. Um, and so we've been working through and kind of trying to document how to integrate uh, the EAS co code. And so this is sort of the EAS core, the SCED tune, and the SCED frequency governor, um, and how those parts don't just go together in the kernel, but also how do they tie in with AOSP. Um, there's a lot of work done inside of AOSP to create kind of uh, different CPU sets so that there can be foreground and background tasks, um, and then basically providing certain styles of boostings for those different uh, uh, CPU groups. Um, and, and basically also how we integrate with the power how, which provides that uh, uh, kind of uh, signal for boosting. Um, we're also working along with uh, other folks uh, inside Lenaro, both uh, the uh, power management work group um, with like uh, Steve Muckle, who's uh, working on uh, getting some benchmarking on this, um, and also folks like Jorge, who's helping uh, from the member services with uh, some of the power and performance measurements. Um, there's also the Opti integration that we're looking at. Um, right now, kind of the first step that we have to do is get the ARM trusted firmware and UEFI firmware, uh, that source code integrated into the AOSP repo. Um, this has kind of taken a lot longer than uh, we hoped, but uh, it's something that we're continuing to get, uh, put, we're continuing to put time on and hopefully we'll be having that done fairly soon. Um, and this will allow us basically to do a lot more work, um, kind of integrating changes uh, that's related to Opti and how that gets integrated with uh, AOSP as well. Um, so, you know, one of the things we're looking at in the meantime, while we try to get the firmware source integrated is also getting the uh, Opti kernel driver uh, from the security group into the high key AOSP kernel. And so hopefully we'll see that being submitted here soon um, and we'll be able to get that merged as well. Um, uh, another area that's been kind of interesting. Um, so one of the things that's very unique with dev boards and especially uh, with the 96 uh, boards where we have these kind of expansion ports is that there can be a number of different kind of hardware configurations that users might be using. So you may have uh, you know, the, the display mezzanine in, you may have uh, uh, other IO expansion uh, set up. And so how you use the board isn't necessarily a static thing. And so one of the problems is since AOSP is usually uh, built, you know, with a single kernel, um, if you're using the A-boot image, there's not even like a serial interface to modify the, the boot command arguments. It's just something that just boots. Um, and so being able to have a way to kind of dynamically change that what the supported hardware configuration is, is is difficult and so one one of the things that uh, dimitri on the google team has done is he's been looking at how to kind of create a driver that is able to switch between uh, a number of basically device tree overlay objects that can be stored in a device tree. And so basically you create kind of a driver node and then a number of sub nodes uh, that can be selected um, by, by the driver. And so those driver will then apply those and, and allow you to kind of change the, the expected configuration. And this way we'll be able to support a number of different uh, configurations with the same kernel without having to change the device tree uh, between boots and then and, and just be able to have it work. Um, and so this is this is a really kind of cool area that that's kind of in progress progress at the moment um, and we'll see how that goes and definitely something we'll want to be pushing upstream as well. Um, we still have a lot of to do's. Uh, it, it's one of those things where Heike, even though it's been announced, you know, it, it, it is kind of a, a, a living project and it's going to evolve kind of along with a, a kind of van the AOSP project. Um, you know, we, we still have a number of bugs I know that we have to address. Um, the bootloader source integration that I said before, um, this is this is important again because it allows for a lot of things. Uh, once we have the bootloader source there, we can get the Opti integration done. But also on the Google side, uh, they have uh, what a very similar technology to Opti that they call Trusty, and they've shown some interest in being wanting to try to integrate that with HiKey. And so we want to make sure that we have that boot, bootloader source there so that we can kind of show how Opti and Trusty might be able to coexist or at least you know it, it coexist in, in in source form so they're not stepping on each other's toes. 
Um, also, once we get the bootloader source integration, we can look at the AB updates, uh, which is basically this uh, kind of Chrome OS style uh, uh, updates that's uh, coming uh, with the next release of Android. Um, now, this requires uh, special partitioning, but it also requires uh, uh, kind of a, a, an ability for the kernel to specify what the active par partition is for the next boot. Um, and so basically, we need kind of an interface to talk to the firmware to say, OK, on the next boot, I want to use this partition as the primary and you know that sort of thing. Um, also, yeah, continuing to get EAS fully integrated into AOSP is, is something we're working on. Um, and uh, then also the generic Lenaro build integration. And so this is kind of an interesting thing that uh, Rob Herring's been working on um, to create basically a uh, device directory uh, that is able to support a number, not just you know a single board, which is normally what is, is done, but something that can support a number of different boards and actually a number of different architectures even. And so he's able to support, you know, x86 devices, ARM devices, and AR64 devices with one build de uh, device directory. Um, and it uses basically the kernel's kconfig for configuration. So basically, it, it kind of takes the normal kind of process that everybody sort of duplicates from one device to the other, creating these uh, device directories that they kind of hack up and kind of centralizes it into one tree um, that then is uses uh, the kconfig language to specify what parts are going to be built for this device. Um, and with things like the uh, uh, multi-device kernels, we might be able to have a situation where we'll be able to create a single build that works on a number of different devices as well. So it's it's, it's a really exciting uh, uh, kind of work that's being prototyped at the moment. And and we want to make sure that high key is a part of it. Um, as far as the common AOSP efforts, uh, this is a, a lot of the work that actually uh, Amit's been focused on. Um, so I'll give him a little space here in a second to, to talk about that. But uh, he's been doing some really deep review of the common uh, Android 4.4 tree, uh, as well as sending some reverts for a number of obsolete features. Um, things like the appended DTB support for non-Z compressed images um, was added by Haojin, uh, and that was something that was required for us to be able to get the uh, A-boot image support to work. Um, and then uh, we've also been integrating kind of other upstream features uh, like the timer slack uh, specifications um, into uh, the AOSP common, uh, or not the common tree, but the, the, the core AOSP uh, user space. Um, and then I guess actually I'll let Amit, I don't know if you have any other comments that you want to do there. Or do you want to talk more about uh, your efforts at the end? No, it looks good. OK. <laughs> um, you know, and also in this process, we, we've found and fixed a number of regressions. We've had a number of uh, really kind of ugly uh, bugs that popped up in the uh, QTAG UID uh, net filter code. Um, and so this is basically stuff where really subtle changes in the 4.4 tree um, that, you know, no one had touched really uh, when moving forward to 4.4 to um, just started causing strange, you know, use after free errors. And, and so we had to dig down for a really long time to be able to chase those bugs. And uh, it, was, it was really great that it was, they were both found and fixed. Um, we also had uh, some USB Ethernet adapter regressions in 4.4 that were uh, resolved. Um, Amit's uh, handled a couple of ConfigFest gadget fix as well as a PTP null pointer deref fix. Um, and then just recently, you know, I found that we were missing a, a CPU set allow attach hooks uh, for some configurations. Um, and so these are all things that, you know, other folks would be hitting eventually, but we were able to kind of go in and clear the way and, and show that, you know, it, with a 4.4 kernel, this is, uh, you know, we're able to kind of harden that before a, a lot of vendors are using that kernel. Um, and again, you know, the reason why this matters, um, which I was kind of just alluding to, was, you know, if you look at the current Nexus devices that were released last October, they're running a 310 kernel, um, which was released way back in June 2013. So it, it's one of those things where that's a three-year-old kernel at this point. Um, even if you look at the latest flagship devices, so something like, you know, the, the S7, which was released in March, um, you know, it's, it's only on a 318 kernel. And so that's, you know, basically uh, almost two years, not quite, year and a half old. Um, now with Hikey, we're on the 4.4 kernel. And so we were able to make that move in just a few months after it was released. Um, and, and we're really also looking a lot more forward too with, you know, we currently have a 4.7 tree. Um, we're continually pushing stuff upstream. And so, so we're really getting ready for the next uh, LTS re release as well. Um, but basically the part that's important here is that 
we're a year ahead of the devices that are being shipped right now. And so we're able to kind of go in, do validation, do testing, work out the issues so that when vendors do move to a 4.4 kernel, possibly, I don't know, 2017 or whenever it will be, um, you know, they can have a lot more confidence that the issues have been worked out, things are gonna go more smoothly. Um, and as long as we keep, you know, kind of uh, uh, working kind of uh, a step ahead, um, th this really makes sure that, you know, we're able to kind of keep keep that going. Um, yeah, I guess so. It might be a good spot. Well, actually, let me just cover the upstreaming stuff, and then I'll let I'm gonna talk some about his his work. So, um, as far as Heike, uh, again, you know, we are focused on getting it uh, the that that the device support upstream. Um, and so, basically, uh, just recently, uh, we managed. So, within four six, the the PMIC and the thermal code landed. In four seven, we got a whole bunch of stuff that landed: the EMMC, the micro SD, uh, the USB support, uh, Wi-Fi, and the DRM display. Um, in 4.8, we've got the power key queued. I'm hoping the RTC code gets queued. It's, it's, the core has, but I'm not sure if the device tree uh, patch will go or not. Um, we've got the media reset. I've been told that the ADV 7533, which is the HDMI bridge, um, that, that should be queued, but I, I haven't confirmed that myself yet. So um, we're looking at basically a huge part of the tree, which at the moment against 4.7, I think it's only like 70 patches. And so we're looking at a big chunk of that already uh, likely to go away in 4.8. Um, as far as with the, uh, you know, upstreaming to-dos, uh, you know, hey, we could always dream that the Molly driver will get upstream, but uh, un unlikely on that one. Um, the HDMI audio is something that we hope to get upstream. Um, there's a few patches to enable kind of high-speed micro SD enablement. Um, uh, there's the reboot reason, which is basically the support for ADV reboot bootloader, where the kernel specifies to the kernel, or specifies to the firmware that we want to boot up into uh, the bootloader the next time. Uh, there's a patch to enable PStore via DTS that we need. Um, then there's also some uh, work that uh, Jorge did on the USB speed auto negotiation that we need to find some sort of a solution upstream because it's it's kind of a, a difficult problem to solve. Um, and then uh, we also need to find a, kind of an upstream Bluetooth solution for AOSP. So one of the things is that the Bluetooth uh, uh, chip, so it's a TI chip, um, they have a driver that has been knacked for upstream um, that's commonly used in AOSP. Um, now, we can just use the direct uh, TTY access um, in things like Debian because we have Bluezy and HCI attached, which knows how to do the firmware loading um, in user space. And the only trouble is that in AOSP, they don't use Bluez, and so they don't have the same uh, uh, kind of tools to uh, enable firmware loading. Um, so we either need to implement something in user space, or we might need to have some sort of a, a kernel space helper that does firmware loading, uh, where we're kind of investigating on that. But those are some of the areas that we still have uh, to do uh, for, you know, 4.9 and beyond. Um, so yeah, and the, the other part uh, is uh, with this that, uh, you know, this is all sort of preparation for the next long-term stable. So I don't know if 4.9 or 4.10 or what it will be um, that, will likely be the next long-term stable, but something I suspect at the end of the year or early next year. Um, and and part of what we hope to do with Heike is to keep it current in, you know, running it up against the mainline kernel, the, the latest long-term long stable kernels. Um, and uh, so basically we're, this is sort of the part of, you know, getting high key upstream so it's ready without a big patch stack. But there's also work that Amit's doing, and so Amit, I'll let you hop in here, uh, trying to prepare for the next long-term stable uh, for the AOSP common tree. Um, guys, real quick, just to just to let you know, we have about five, ten more minutes left. Uh, okay. <laughs> of the of the recorded call, we can still hang out okay. and still talk, but we usually stop the recording at about the hour. Yeah, so I, I don't have anything else after this, so I'll I'll let Amit have talk talk about his work and then uh, I'm I'm done. No, great. No, that presentation was awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. So uh, as John mentioned, that uh, as part of our preparation to move to the next uh, stable kernel, uh, we stay in process. So we take the latest RC or latest tree which is available at uh, in the next next. And we cherry pick AOSP patches on top of it. We make sure that if there is a functionality in AOSP, and if, if there's a functionality in AOSP which is not upstream, but there is an equivalent functionality which recently got added. So we make sure that you know we convey those changes back to uh, AOSP and say, hey, this feature is no longer valid. We 
have a solution which we can use now. So, and we get rid of those particular patch sets in AOSP kernel. So that way we have managed to clean up for like 15, 20 patches in the last couple of months alone. So that's the whole, uh, whole uh, you know, benefit of doing this process. That at least we know that, you know, we don't have to carry all, all these many patches for the next stable tree. Uh, that's all I think I had to add on top of what John just said. So because yeah. whatever we do, John has summed up pretty nicely there. Yeah, that was a that was a pretty that was a pretty involved uh, presentation. So you're going to be giving a presentation at Connect in Las Vegas this this uh, this upcoming one, right? Is that what you were saying? Um, probably on something like this. It's one of those things where I wasn't sure if it would be a lightning talk or what, but I was kind of doing some preparation for that when you asked to, <laughs> me to, 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 to give yeah. this talk. So I figured no, I, I might cool. as well use that. Don't have any yeah, other material. So <laughs> For, for those of you who are interested, uh, the, the, I just posted the link to the Lenaro Connect Las Vegas. It's going to be happening in September. I think eight, there's, a, there's a countdown on there, 80 days or something. It's, it's pretty exciting. You get to see a bunch of, of developers talk about pretty much the bleeding edge of, of this open source technology and what's going on in, in the world right now. Uh, a lot of, lot of uh, hardworking developers that are, are doing stuff like John and Amit here, a, a lot of people on this call right now that, that – uh, that you can listen to and, and follow their presentations, all sorts of really cool stuff going on and good food. <laughs> there's always, there's food all the time when you're at connect, but um, uh, yeah, anyways, I want to just kind of open the floor for questions now. Right. So we got to see John's, John's presentation. We got to listen to Amit. Does anyone have any questions with regards to AOSP or what was talked about today? Uh, I know there was a conversation going on in the background. Oh yeah, so th the logo on John's Mark Bolzer asks. I wondered about the Connect 2016 or mentions, but um, yeah, so that that logo will probably be changed for the Las yeah, Vegas I, one. I, right? I, I don't <laughs> have any templates at the moment, so that was just kind of what I was scratching out with for uh, kind of an er early draft. <laughs> cool. Um, now I would I just want to get one last question in, and this kind of goes towards towards what's recently happened with the release from last week, the 1606 reference platform re release. Now I know AOSP used to be a part of this release. Now I used to go to the reference platform images and be able to, to uh, flash AOSP on my high key. Now I can't do that. Now I have to go to the Google site to, to build, download. Is there a place to get pre-built images yet for that? Um, or why, how has this changed? Yeah, this is an area that we're working on and I know it's a, a, a pain point. Um, and so we are trying to get this resolved. So one, one of the parts of uh, kind of our agreement with Google was that we didn't want to kind of muddy uh, the waters with too many different variants of uh, Android images for high key. And so we wanted to basically for Google to be the canonical source for both the code as well as the binary images. Um, and the trouble is, is that there we had a couple of blockers, things like the fact that we didn't support a boot image initially uh, that prevented Google from being able to create pre-build images. So we had for 1603, I guess, uh, still a release. And that was kind of before the announcement anyway. Um, for, you know, going forward, we want Google to be the canonical source. They are actually now creating pre-built images. Um, the only trouble is that there's a little bit of a kind of usability hiccup in that they're only producing the the, the system and the you know boot image and the user and the cache images. So sort of the standard uh, user space uh, images, but they don't include the firmware. And, and on some boards, we have the problem where if you've just bought your board, if you went and tried to flash those images, uh, the, the firmware on your board might not support a boot image yet. And so we, we want to kind of basically add a little bit, something more similar to um, kind of the factory images that you can get from Google for Nexus devices that will include both the bootloader as well as the flash all script in order to kind of uh, ha have a, a better kind of user experience. And so this is something we're actively working on right now, um, trying to get it resolved. There's uh, kind of some weird gotchas here or there. So we may be hosting uh, 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 kind of factory images that basically either point to the Google images or fetch them, or I'm not sure what the solution is going to be right this second, but um, we're, we're working on that. And as soon as we get something negotiated, 
negotiate it out. <laughs> we'll, we'll have it available. Um, but yeah, at the moment, unfortunately, uh, uh, kind of doing a full build is sort of the, uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, recommended approach. Um, but we are hopefully going to have that solved soon. Cool. That's great. Thank you. Um, well, then I guess that kind of that kind of concludes the show. Unless anyone would like to get a question in for for John or or Amit while they're here. Questions always help everyone else because these are recorded. It helps people when they watch the videos later, if anyone has anything. Okay, well, then I guess thank you very much, everyone, for coming. John, uh, Amit, really appreciate the discussion. Thank you for answering our questions. Thank you for the presentation. And uh, we hope to see you around sometime maybe uh, in a later show. Maybe we can get some more information after Connect of what's going on. But uh, – but yeah, thank you everyone for coming. If if you want to stick around for a few minutes for the after hours, we can have a, we'll stop the recording now, I guess. Yeah.